and welcome back this is Tosashi and I'm here once again with a uh, tier list oh wait a minute <laughs> I messed up the music there I thought let me uh, get some nice super mega champions music on the background let's try again here future bounce let's go okay <laughs> so welcome back it's a season reaching the end of season 15 by now uh, when I'm recording this and I think when you uh, will see this either season 16 or season 15 has just ended and uh, it's been two seasons since I did a last um, uh, my last tier video and a lot has changed actually ever since so I will just jump into it and um, please remember that these are just my opinions i've been playing the game now since season 10 so it's been like a year and a half roughly for me um let's confirm this and uh yeah i've been playing on and off almost daily uh, i got most mecha above rank 25 let me take a quick look i think my lowest ranking uh, mecha is Alborada at level 17 uh, then there's a northern knight at 17 as well doomlight 22 and then gabriel 22 and then from baltus and everyone else is 25 or higher my top 10 mecha are all 30 or higher my highest is 37 just um to give you some reference so yeah i'm um I'm not gonna say like I'm a pro or something but I do have quite some experience with this game and uh, if there's something that I'm saying and you don't agree with it feel free to leave a comment about it down below and um, if you enjoy it leave a like and a subscribe and all that good stuff um, let's just jump into it um, I will go through this mecha through the order and uh, let's start it off with uh, Firefox I think Firefox is a very solid mecha, very fun to play, extremely high damage potential. And uh, one of the strongest things of Firefox, I think, is that it's pretty tanky and it has very high damage potential. And it has pretty decent mobility, but it doesn't have really good uh, vertical mobility. So the horizontal mobility is good. You can do dashes quite frequently quite often um uh yeah the only reason why i wouldn't rank it higher is because it it's jumping is very limited its mobility is limited um especially if we compare it for example with the next mecha and arthur i've been playing more lately and i know there's a lot of arthur mains and arthur pros out there and i'm really doubting whether i should put arthur at s plus or s um the reason why arthur is so high is first of all its damage output is incredible its mobility is even more incredible you can just dash in all directions basically you have a double jump you can even have like a triple dash and a double jump if you have core one i think the core two is also really powerful on arthur um only downside i would say is that it takes some practice uh, to balance all the different forms of uh, mobility and damage and your shots are not the easiest to hit always so having said that i th think you know what i actually for now i will put arthur at s plus because for some reason in like a couple of patches ago the designers decided to pump up its uh, durability to 3100 uh, by default so not only is it is it one of the strongest uh, close range champions it's one of those older generation uh, not champions uh, mecha <laughs> one of those older generation mecha that are that is just uh, destroying in all ranges so cannot get to every position on a map like for example uh, i don't know uh, 
a hot steel or a caramel, for example. But it doesn't always have to because it's so agile and it doesn't have damage drop off the further uh, the enemies are. Yeah, I think it's a solid uh, S plus um, mecha. Moving on to caramel, I think caramel is a very f user friendly mecha. It's really easy to get into. I think uh, Arthur is a bit more difficult, uh, but it has a very high skill ceiling. So that's like step in level. I think you, uh, Firefox and uh, Caramel are really easy to get into. And you can just press the fire button uh, and <laughs> you will do some work. Jumping is really good. Even if you land on people, you can do some damage with that as well. You can move people around really good uh, with the secondary weapon there. Um, I think overall Caramel is in a, always in a good spot. It's very tanky. And of course you have the tank form where you can just blast, pe blast people before they even found you, uh, found, uh, found you. So it could even function as a sniper mecha. The only reason why I don't put it higher is that it can be a bit hungry when it comes to the fuel. So yeah, you have to keep jumping and your aim has to be relatively good, but the AOE damage is very solid. I think uh, A plus is a good uh, place to put Caramel for now. Also, by the way, as you can see, I started B, which is already pretty high. I don't have D or F ranking because I think every single mecha in this roster is solid. I think most of these mecha are also very fun to play. Uh, so also uh, the way that I rank them doesn't say anything about the fun or whether you should play them or not. It's just a comparison in relation to each other relative to, to one another uh, to see, uh, yeah, how I think of this mecha basically when in terms of power and ease of use. So some mecha might be more powerful on paper but are very difficult to use. But in general, I do notice that the more difficult the mecha is to get into, the higher the skill ceiling. So that might have them end up higher. Uh, so if we continue with uh, Skylark, I think Skylark is... For Skylark, it really depends on which mode you're playing. I myself mostly play Battle Royale. And uh, the past few months, I've been playing more Battle Royale solo games. Uh, the other seasons I've played mostly squad games and every now and then I also play team deathmatch and iron uh, what is it called iron arena and sometimes I try out the new forms but it's mostly team deathmatch iron arena and uh, battle royale and I think in iron arena skylark is an easy s plus easy because it has self-healing of course you do have to hit it and also does a lot of damage at secondary it has like a global range almost um, the primary is really solid, especially if you build it in uh, with uh, uh, self-repair uh, defense modules. Um, and it's very quick. I myself really enjoy playing Skylark with um, uh, Mobius's uh, secondary pilot ability. So the Wings of Swiftness, it's just the moment you get someone actually manages uh, to hit you uh, you just keep dashing and jumping and very hard to pin down it's a bit more squishy though um, and if you don't move well it's really actually an easy target to take down so you also need to compensate for the movement yourself that you uh, keep aiming well so that makes it a little bit more difficult and also it doesn't really have good vertical mobility it's excellent horizontal mobility not very good vertical mobility um, if it would be able to hover better than it currently does i think it would be an s rank all across the board but for now i think it's a good competitor with these two tanks here uh, it's faster Damage output is kind of similar, but it has self-healing. So yeah, depending on the mode, I think Skylark is just a top, top mecha. Definitely recommend it. It's one of the first, uh, one of the starter mecha also, so um, anyone can play it. Okay, moving on to Hot Steel. Um, Hot Steel, I'm a bit conflicted 
I started uh, playing how to steal quite a lot in the beginning, and it's still my second highest ranking. I think I got it at level 34 by now. Um, but lately, whenever I play it, it's, I notice that it's, um, its sluggishness is kind of pulling it down. So ba on paper, I would say it's actually an S rank mecha, but it falls off pretty quickly the further the distance is. So all of these other mecha are really strong in all distances. I think Hotstew kind of falls off a little bit. So you have to really be aware of your surroundings. You have to be really aware of your enemy and your own mecha. You have to uh, uh, juggle your fuel quite a lot. Uh, in the right hands, it's an absolute monster, and I would say S or S+. Plus. Um, of course, it does also have the highest durability of all mecha in the game. And you can even build more into that. In close range, it's an absolute monster, and also the, the flying and the hovering is really solid. But just because its damage falls off, I do feel like it's not in the best spot but currently, I mean, it's still A ranking, still really good, fun mecha to play. Um, yeah, you just have to play into its uh, strengths um, and be aware of its weaknesses. Moving on to Andromeda. Well, we have all seen the Andromeda bots and they are like flying, floating ducks, basically, like that's the old Nintendo duck game. You can just shoot them out of the air, shoot them from the ground. Very squishy, like only 26 or 2500 durability. Um, but in the right hands, I actually think Andromeda is one of the strongest mecha in the entire game because she shouldn't just hover around. You should ascend and then drop yourself while shooting. You have that spear with the right core, you can track and make it easy to hit. And once you hit the spear, all of your shots get kind of um, this heat-seeking feature where it's so much easier to keep your DPS high. And Andromeda is an absolute beast in the right hands. Plus, on top of that, it's one of the mecha, because it's, it has this excellent vertical mobility, it can get anywhere. I myself uh, love running the, um, the mod to increase flight speed. I think it's the propulsion mods to increase flight speeds by like 20% or so. Uh, and that uh, stacked with the uh, Wings of swif Swiftness uh, by Mobius, it's just you're uncatchable. And then you don't really don't notice that it's um, uh, that it has so little uh, durability. Also, because on top of that, it does such high damage on all distances. So I think Andromeda is an absolute... Uh, Beast, the only reason why I don't put it higher next to Arthur is because its horizontal mobility is a little bit lacking. Um, you really have to time it well, you shouldn't just use it randomly because it has a relatively longer cooldown for what you actually want and it's a very short tumble, you could say. Right. Um, so yeah, that's the only reason why I don't uh, think Andromeda is uh, S+. Okay, Gabriel, always uh, a mecha that um, a lot of people, especially older generation people that, uh, not in age, but like in the game, really love to play this. And uh, I have been on and off playing this mecha. I'm myself not the, um, the best sniper. I like to brawl, I like, like, I like uh, mid-range uh, to close range. Uh, jewels the most sometimes a bit of poking on the long range and I think Gabriel has kind of the opposite of what hot steel has really solid damage potential and um, what is it called the ghost form or the teleportation dash or whatever um, is good you can get everywhere basically uh, so you can get a nice solid sniping position but you really have to build around that camping strategy because the moment you get found, uh, the lo the short range damage is really, it's not the damage, it's more the short range capabilities are a bit lacking. So literally the polar opposite of hot steel, 
where it's a very focused mecca in a way. Um, and the moment someone gets close to you and you don't know how to uh, zoom in, snipe, zoom out, use a normal attack, then alternate the scoping and the non-scoping for optimizing your damage potential while at the same time jumping and moving and dashing. It's a lot to uh, juggle at the same time. But when you do manage that, it's it's maybe an S rank. But I don't see a lot of people get to that level. I myself definitely am not at that level. And for that reason, I think it's skill cap is pretty high, but it's skill. Uh, so the skill ceiling is pretty high, but getting into this mecha takes quite some time and effort. Um, and even then, it stays difficult, I would say. So, yeah, I think A ranking is pretty good. Yeah, so far, nothing below A. Also, if it's something gets into B plus or B, it still doesn't mean it's bad. Just means that I think the mecha might need some buff or some, some work. But so far, I think all of these mecha are perfectly fine as they are. Uh... Same goes for Doomlight. Uh, Doomlight is a completely different play strategy. You don't have a dash. You don't basically don't have horizontal mobility. You only have the, the, the flying upwards, which is pretty fast. It's faster than uh, Andromeda or um, Hot Steel for that matter. Um, but it's I think it's the slowest mecha out there. It's pretty tanky. It has the shield, which makes it even more tanky. But the thing with the shield is... I think Doomlight um, also depends on the mode, actually. If you play Doomlight in Iron Arena, it could be an S-ranking, S actually, because in, you can abuse the shield and your positioning a little bit more there, and the turrets are really annoying in a 2v2 situation. But in a um, Battle Royale situation, if people are aware of the turrets and the shielding, you can play around it. You do have to always take down the turrets as fast as you can. And that this does definitely uh, distract the opponent. So it's more about how do you place your turrets? When do you place them? When do you activate the shield? Um, it could be definitely strong. I think Doomlight, actually this goes for every mecha. Every mecha can defeat any other mecha, if you ask me. By the piloted by the right person, uh, played into the right circumstances, any mecha could destroy, annihilate any other mecha. Any mecha in the game can get wins. Um, with Doomlight, it just requires a little bit more strategic thinking, I would say, instead of um, sheer um, muscle memory and, uh, and such. So it's a bit more specific. Then Firestar. So Firestar, I will start here. Um, in my previous ranking, it was six, season 13, I think. I ranked Firestar a bit lower because I felt like Firestar was a bit lacking. But luckily, like uh, one season ago, I think, Firestar got a complete overhaul of abilities, of mods. And both the, the, both the cores changed as well. And it's an absolute monster. Maybe, actually, you know what? I will put Firestar at S+. Plus. Firestar is in currently in the current state of the game in a very powerful uh, enemy. Uh, very scary always to um, encounter because it's so nimble. It can... Also, what it changed is now when you enter the ball, uh, ball mode and you jump... And you can immediately release the dash button so you can just shoot yourself you can catapult yourself in all directions it does take a bit of practice to get like between buildings or on top of buildings but you can not with ease but you can get almost anywhere in the entire game be it for hi hiding or chasing after um yeah i think skylark is they they say it's a hit or run yeah i think it's one of the best hit and run mecha because you can just engage and disengage so easily with that powerful dash and you don't have to charge it anymore 
uh, on top of that its damage doesn't fall off you can just shoot across the map uh, and it those bullets are fast and big and they do a lot of AoE and in close range you even have the flamethrower and if you have I think it was core 2 the rings of fire in close range you can just circle around your enemies as a ball and just uh, what's the word? Immolate them? No. Uh, engulf them in flames, basically. And they don't know what to do with it. Or well, Core 1 is also amazing, where you just leave trails of fire everywhere. And on top of all of that, the moment you hit an enemy, be it a pilot or a mecha, uh, you can track them. Because the damage over time um, shows the numbers on the location where the enemy is. So similar to Skylark's mod, uh, where you can see them through buildings basically a little bit after hitting them, uh, Firestar has that by default, actually. The moment you shoot and hit someone, you will see where they are roughly. And that information is cannot be underestimated. So I think the mobility, the damage, the durability is fine. It's, it's not a tank mecha, but it's right below 3000, I think. <clears throat> so a little bit less tanky than uh, than Arthur, but its damage potential is higher and mobility is the same. Actually, I might think that Firestar's mobility is slightly superior to Arthur's because it can, um, with more ease, get in higher positions. Yeah. And it's easier also to kill pilots with Firestar. Than it is with Arthur. So maybe for that reason. Hmm. Hmm. I do think Arthur is in a better position than Andromeda. Yeah, let's just keep them both at S plus. Arthur and Firestar. Very good. Okay. Now well, we're in the S plus and I will immediately put Hurricane there again. Just like last time. And I know there's people that don't like Hurricane or that don't enjoy um putting effort in it because it does require quite some effort. It's my third most played mecha. I think I got it at level 33 by now. And um, it's just so versatile. You can just do so much with it. You can get in every position. You can dash in the air. You can dash horizontally, vertically, diagonally. You can dash in all directions. And the moment you release your dash, you, have, you can utilize momentum to get further than you would normally uh, be able to do uh, to get and while you do that you can just release your heat seeking missiles if you have the the mod equipped and just do a lot of damage while they cannot catch you and at the same time its machine gun is so powerful it just melts anyone if i think with all of these mecha uh, the DPS potential, so the damage per second potential, if someone would mech up in front of you, as a Hurricane or a Firestar, you just have to empty, not even your your clip, before emptying it, the enemy mecha is already down, even when it's a hot steal. So in the time they get to mech up and f activate their first ability, their mecha is already destroyed by Fire uh, Firestar or Hurricane, uh, sorry, Fire Fox or Hurricane. But the difference between these two is that Hurricane can fly. What what do I have to say more? Flying is such a powerful ability. Sure, Arthur and Firestar can get in almost every place, and Andromeda can hover kind of and fly kind of, but it's slow. Hurricane can fly fast if it needs to. So um, yeah, easy S plus to me. Moving on to Raven. I think Raven is uh, always has been in a pretty solid spot. Uh, in the right hands, S, S+. Plus, but it does require a lot of um, practice. And for me, it's also very on and off. Sometimes I have amazing Raven games. Sometimes I'm playing Raven and I just fail to shoot down a pilot. <laughs> because if you don't hit... Uh, the explosive, explosive radius of the arrows is pretty big, but if you don't hit at all, yeah, you just used a couple of seconds of not hitting and not doing anything. So mobility is pretty great. With a grappling hook, you can get in 
any position. Um, and you can hover through the air a little bit, kind of. Uh, you have the momentum leap. So after the grappling hook, you can jump and uh, change direction even with the momentum, which is really solid. And of all the sniper mecha, I do think, hmm, I do think Raven is the best sniper in the game, but it doesn't have the best reach necessarily. So I think Raven would be S or higher if when you charge your arrow, if, if the ca camera would zoom in a little bit, just like maybe like 1.5 times or something, because sometimes it's really hard to pinpoint enemies in a further distance. The, the projectile speed is really good, um, but just the vision, it could have some aid, aid in the vision. It's more like a mid-range to long-range sniper, where um, Gabriel is more like a long-range sniper, I would say. Raven, very fun, difficult, but fun. High skill ceiling, but I think because of these mechas having the superior dashing capabilities and dodging capabilities yeah i think they have a better mobility but uh, yeah a plus seems to be good for raven moving on to trio of enders i will also place that one right here because uh, damage wise i think trio yeah trio just basically whatever it does it will deal damage so has multiple weapons for multiple ranges effective in every range like so far i would say everything that's here a plus and higher is effective at every range trio really excels in medium range close range also with the shotgun but also long range with the rockets it's i think it's a very solid mecha the only reason why it's not higher is it's really lacking in the uh, vertical mobility you can jam, jump and that's it the dash is amazing because you just unload all of your open up all your weapons and unload onto the enemy and um, can completely annihilate anyone um, fun mecha to play also very fun all right so we're reaching now one of my favorite mecha and i don't think it would surprise anyone if i put it at the uh, s plus rank there I think it's also time for maybe a different music. Hey, Liefje, in this recording, I'll uh, put on some default standby music for now. And um, put the phone a little bit closer. So, Neutron Star is a mecha that has very good mobility. With Core 2, you can even hover. Um, and the reason why I put it here is it has it's a very good hit and run. Sorry, my baby's coming here. Mm. Yeah, I'm making the, the mecha of this mm. season. Um, so Neutron Star is just very scary. It's, it's a small frame, so it's harder to hit. It has, I think, the strongest, maybe next to Firestar, the strongest melee range damage potential. The moment you start swinging with those blades, it's just game over for most meta. But the thing with Neutron Star is it's also so fast, you can just move in and out like a true rogue. You can move in and out and just completely annihilate people, and then when things turn sour, it can just disengage with ease. Especially with Core 2, you can just hover through the air while blasting everyone. And its reload speed is super fast, the, the blasting pistols are very high has a very high damage output especially if you focus them down on your mask um, make them more precise so you can even poke more on a longer range i personally never really do that um, <clears throat> because i think it's actually already good enough to just uh, be blasting them in mid and close range yeah can just annihilate anyone takes down pilots with pretty pretty good ease so yeah, Neutron Star is definitely deserving of an S plus one today, and it's very stable also. Um, very reliable pick, both in squad, squad games, Iron Arena, Team Deathmatch, Battle Royale, the mode doesn't matter, Neutron Star will always shine. Um, 
And it's not really a difficult meta to get into. It's more like you have to keep in mind that it has a big shield. You have to keep in mind that it kind of plays like an assassin. Move in, destroy people, move out, recharge. A little bit like Hurricane in that sense. Um, so it's not much of a brawler. It's more like a, uh, an assassin. So if you keep that in mind, um, you will just annihilate people. Okay, moving on to Voltus. <clears throat> I think Voltus is has been receiving some nerfs actually lately, and I don't understand why. Because first of all, you don't see so many Voltus players already, and sure, it has very high damage output, but that's basically all it does. It has a decent dash that you can use also diagonally um, average cooldown I think maybe hmm, after all the nerfs I'm actually wondering maybe Boltus might need a little bit of a rework maybe Boltus could be in a better spot because it does all it does is deal a lot of damage but at the same time it doesn't deal enough damage to compensate for the lack in other departments hmm. of course there's very good bonus players out there and if left unchecked like in squad games just like gabriel if, if you don't focus down the bolters it will just annihilate anyone because those those balls to shoot so fast and do a lot of damage but it's really easy actually to just destroy a bolt with any other mecha i think yeah it might need some work then luckily then Taurus did receive some work so last time i ranked it b but i felt like then Taurus really needed some attention and i'm glad it received it because bolt is now is a very capable brawler and I also learned from some other YouTubers that I um, was actually playing Ventorus wrong. I was not using the dragon mode and the beast mode or whatever it's called at the right times. So you should use your normal default mode for the poking and the long range fighting. And then the transformed mode when, when you go in, when you want to finish someone off. So that's more like the similar to neutron star with the blades or uh, fire star with the flamethrower uh, arthur with the secondary weapon as well that's how the transformation transformed mode of ventor is also functions a bit better the only reason why i don't rank it higher is that the double jump you have is a bit limited so arthur can just double jump as long as you have the cooldown uh, as you don't have some cooldown i mean the ventores can only do the jump after dashing oh, it's a double dash it's not a double jump even it's a double dash yeah that already makes a difference you do have a momentum leap that I discovered recently, similar to Arthur or Raven. That's big. That definitely makes it way more powerful than I thought before. But also just uh, now that it it moves, it doesn't lose movement speed as it's shooting in the transformed mode. It has been having reworked left and right over the course of time, and I think it's a pretty in a pretty good spot. Definitely not an easy mecha to get into, but very versatile and um, a fun mecha to play. Okay, Aurora is still my number one most played mecha. I um, have it at level 37 still. And for me personally, it really fits my play style perfectly fine. It's mobile. It can move in all directions, it can dash, um, it has very solid damage output and it has that Kamehameha wave which I think is just one of the most fun secondary abilities in the entire game. I also built Aurora all the way around 
the second and uh, around that beam to make it more mobile to make it more versatile more damaging and i think it's great it's pretty squishy though the mecha it's it's a mecha where you really have to yeah you have to know how to move and how to use your, uh, how to shoot and how to um correct your aim while dashing falling get some some shots in there in between while dropping from the sky um it's a really good burst mecha can engage and disengage pretty well but the moment it's spotted i think yeah the moment an aurora is spotted is very obvious that you have to focus it down so i think the mecha up here have an easier time disengaging but the, i think they have a slightly superior mobility to andromeda and aurora well, even though I love Aurora a lot, I think what could help it is to have either a little bit more durability or some more sustain in a different way or a tiny bit more fuel to compete with the others up here. Um, but yeah, if, if I play Aurora, I, I'm very confident I can take the win basically. And I have it actually with all six of these mecha. Uh, yeah, so to me, S and S plus is very closely tied. The only difference here now is that S plus has just the superior mobility compared to these two, for example. Um, moving on to Alborada, I think Alborada is um, it's a solid pick. Uh, definitely shines in in uh, squad games. Also in Iron Arena, it, that just uh, sometimes when you play with two versus two in Iron Arena, you have an Alborada and a Doomlight. They both easily get S plus because they just support each other so well. But in Battle Royale, um, it really depends. I think Alborada is, as I've shown in some of my videos, also a surprisingly good brawler. It has such a high damage potential. And then if I compare it to Boltus, it has pretty similar mobility. Boltus has maybe a little bit better mobility because Alborada can only move uh, horizontally, kind of. Uh, but Alborada, in my experience, does just as much damage as Boltus, if not more, because everything you do with this mecha empowers other attacking abilities. So whether you dash or throw that secondary weapon but at the same time it also buffs allies and itself so actually for that reason i think it's just a very powerful mecha i just there's one reason why i don't play it so much is i don't like the aesthetic design i know i know it's very superficial of me i love all the aesthetic aesthetic designs of all the mecha in this game i think that all have this uniqueness to them and they all have this character but i just don't like how gendered alborada is to me none of these mecha have to be gendered uh andromeda is all, already pushing it if you ask me with with the big booty uh doesn't mecha don't need booties if you ask me but <laughs> that's just my opinion i guess but with alborada it's just uh they, they, they double down on this uh, kind of thing which is really not my thing and um, yeah I don't know why why does it have a skirt why does it have small boobs why does it have the tiny waist it's and then the uh, it's it's just too much for me I, I can't handle it so so well the aesthetics of Alborada so that's why I don't play it so much but mechanically speaking I think it's actually a really solid mecha it's also very fun to play. Uh, I just don't like looking at it. Sorry. <laughs> but it is in a good place. I think it's um, A plus would actually make sense for Alborada. All right. Michael, last time I ranked as, ranked it as one of the best mecha in the game. I still think that's the case. Um, however, 
while other mecha have been receiving buffs and changes and alterations, Michael has been kind of not falling behind, but because nothing has been changed to Michael, Michael has been kind of just staying as it is, which is in a really good spot. Michael does a lot of damage across the field, doesn't matter whether the enemy is close by, uh, far away, medium, long range, Michael does it all. It's a very good engager, very good disengager. It takes a lot of effort though, it takes a lot of practice, similar to, I would say, Hurricane, similar to Aurora. Also similar to, in the difficulty, I would say, to Hot Steel, maybe, in the difficulty. No, I think Michael is actually easier than Hot Steel. More, more difficult to play than Aurora because his Michael's pretty squishy but it has kind of double jump but in reverse order so you have to be able to move your camera around on time and his versatility definitely helps in uh, making sure that uh, the enemy doesn't really expect where you're going and in the at the same time while shooting yourself all the way up faster than Aurora or Andromeda by the way uh, kind of similar speed as Firestar but the difference is as Michael he can keep shooting those daggers those daggers are so powerful they do so much damage similar to Andromeda's daggers but Michael just moves faster um, yeah very very solid mecha okay Northern Knight last time I accidentally forgot about this mecha and also placed it uh, at the lowest and in the meantime Northern Knight has not received any buffs or attention um, there's very good Northern Knight um, players out there I myself am not the definitely not a good Northern Knight player um, but I do feel like the shield is too easy to abuse like as an opponent so you either just destroy it, which is, I mean, as a Firefox or Firestar, you can even kind of blast around it. Um, or as a neutron star, you just circle or Skylark even, you circle around the, the um, Northern Knight and you just shoot him in the back. I think in, solo, in a solo environment, one versus one, Northern Knight is very strong because if, if as a Northern Knight player you know where your enemy is, you can utilize that shield. And this, I do think it's a better shield than Doom Lights. But its damage is just not great. It's, it's similar to fire, uh, Hot Steel. The Hot Steel has a superior mobility. Uh, and also I think does higher damage than Northern Knights. Um, yeah, I think Northern Knight might need some some buffing. Maybe if the shield is bigger, like in size, that it kind of curls around the mecha, or that it absorbs more damage, or that it does something with the damage, like uh, Akashic, for example. Uh, or the dash maybe should be faster. There's some I think Northern Nord or maybe its durability should be higher. Or the damage more reliable. I, I think I think Northern Knight is a bit lacking still. And I do think Bolters they kind of have a similar mobility. They can dash and change direction mid-air. Bolters has damage all across the board. And Northern Knight doesn't. Northern Knight falls off pretty quickly beyond mid-range. Yeah. I think Northern Knight deserves some love. Also, they didn't release the pilot yet, so it kind of sometimes feels like Northern Northern Knight is this like project that they kind of abandoned in a way. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Uh, moving on to Ranger, I think Ranger is in a really good spot. They nerfed it a little bit, but to me, it just felt like a like a rebalance. Um, let's uh, do uh, another piece of music again. There we go. I only have four, so that's basically three different tracks on my uh, game here. <laughs> they removed some of the other ones. Um, this one is a bit more chill. 
So, Ranger, super mobile, especially with, uh, I think it's score two, because you get the, the double dash, similar to Michael, but then in the same direction. Hmm, would I rank it higher? Let me think about this, because I think Ranger has a very high damage output. That's the thing, if I compare Ranger to Boltus, they both have a similar amount of uh, very powerful damage output. But Ranger has way better mobility and also when it transforms into a car, it can just run away easily, easily. It can disengage quite well, it can engage also quite well. Uh, let me just try this out. Aurora music. Is it also music? Or is it just the sound? Wait a minute. I know what to do. I'm gonna... Excuse me for a moment. I'm DJing, let's say, <laughs> at the same time. Um, I got uh, this Ning skin that has music with it. And if, if I remember correctly, that music was pretty cool, actually. Uh, this one. There we go. <laughs> Some up, up tempo. Or, uh, oh, but that's it. It stops there. Uh, that's too bad. You know what? Let's just keep, keep this chill, chill music a little bit on the background. Um, <coughs> so Ranger has really good mobility, can also, similar to Firestar actually, dash in all directions, get in most places. The one thing that I don't like about Ranger and that it has the same thing that Alborada has, and sometimes Trio has it a little bit, but after running at max speed, they kind of don't stop immediately when you stop moving. They kind of slide. And I, I'm guessing this sliding you can definitely use and abuse maybe if you know how to time it and stuff. But to be honest, I don't really like it. I see it more as a disadvantage than as a uh, advantage. So for that reason, I will actually place Ranger here. It's pretty squishy, they, I think they dropped it down to 3000 or maybe even 2900 durability by now. Um, it has good explosive radius though, similar to uh, Caramel, but it shoots faster. I think A plus is a pretty good uh, position for Ranger to be in currently. I think if it would have more durability or maybe more damage medication in car form or more speed in car form should be higher. But for now, let's keep it here. Flamenco. Also, I ranked pretty low last time because I felt like it was too much of a closed range mecha that lost um, a lot of damage output the moment you move beyond or actually already at medium range. Um, but I've been playing quite a lot Flamenco lately. I think I got it at level 29 by now. And I think Flamenco is one of the strongest brawlers in the entire game. So in close and mid range, it just has so many different ways of attacking. It has the sla sword slashing that can also be used as mobility, similar to a Neutron Star and um, Arthur, just to dash an attack out of the way. But also it does a lot of damage on a long range actually. If you manage to hit it, similar to uh, Skylark secondary. Uh, the jump is similar to Caramels, but with a bigger range of damage. Uh, it also does more damage, if I remember correctly. Um, its primary weapon shoots really fast um, and can crit actually quite easily. So I think. Um, all these mecha, uh, Firefox and Hurricane and Neutron Star and Trio seem to be having an easier time to crit, probably because their bullets are smaller. Aurora also sometimes. Skylark gets already a bit more difficult because the bullets are bigger, I think. And here the bullets are also smaller with Flamenco, making it easier to crit if you go for those headshots. And that does make a big difference. So if your aim is good and if your positioning is good, I think Flamenco is a very strong mecha currently. Um, still, you do have to be 
in the medium range um, or close range preferably yeah preferably you just want to be in their face actually but if you manage to play around that i think it's going to be in a really uh, you're going to have a good time with this mecha uh, let's see here pulsar okay i think last time i ranked pulsar a little bit too low because hmm, it's getting a bit crowded here in the a plus which is actually a good sign because it shows that uh, in my experience the game is pretty pretty balanced i think pulsar is a very good sniper similar to raven i'm really not good at pulsar it's fast it's mobile similar mobility to in a way, similar mobility to Neutron Star actually, and then when you transform into the sniping mode, you are harder to hit, but at the same time, it's also harder to hit the enemy. So, Pulsar requires a lot of practice. But actually, I shouldn't just look at it from my capabilities. I have seen people do crazy things with Pulsar, especially in Team Deathmatch. It's a very popular mecha there. It's mobile, it can move in all directions with a high speed, it can use momentum to its advantage. It can blast in short range similar to a uh, neutron star uh, with its guns, but also it can nuke people on a difference uh, on a distance similar to Aurora or Raven. So I think even though I'm not good at Pulsar, Pulsar as a mecha is in a pretty good spot actually. Uh, just requires quite some effort. You have to constantly be reloading and then while reloading, changing form and blasting and dashing and then stop the dashing to reload again and to snipe again. Keep moving and then you go up and then you go to the side. You have to keep moving. So basically what you have to do with Gabriel, you have to do more with Pulsar. It takes more effort, but you have more mobility options. More versatility in the mobility that's why i think pulsar is actually probably the best sniper at the moment because it has this versatility raven is a really good sniper gabriel's really good sniper don't get me wrong but gabriel is a bit more narrow in how you should play it raven already becomes more of a brawler like in the mid range Pulsar actually, it can be long range, mid range, close range. It's very versatile mecha. It requires a lot of effort, but if you manage to pull it off, I think it's. it's I, I love play, uh, seeing people play Pulsar well. I think it's a very beautiful uh, play style, um, but not easy to pull off. But yeah, I do think it's in the S rank currently. Then, to everyone's surprise, last time. I had Snow Mirage at S because I was just destroying people in season 13 with Snow Mirage, especially when it just came out. And then after patch after patch after patch, they kept kept destroying this mecha, taking away the extra grenade, taking away the bullet spread, taking away the extra damage. And to be honest, they just kept taking away of what made this mecha such a fun and powerful pick and it actually managed to kind of destroy it. I'm sad to say it was my favorite mecha after it came out. Um, and I played it quite a bit. I got it uh, like at level 29 very quickly um, because I just kept winning and kept destroying people. And now every time when I try it out again after a new patch, I'm so disappointed by it. Um, so because it I will, let me try to explain. So yeah, sure, it has similar versatility like Pearlstar that you can fight in every range. But effectively nowadays it actually can't. It's forced to more play like Gabriel, where you have to snipe and then reload and then dash and then while you fall you snipe again or while you dash up. So similar, kind of like a blend between Pulsar and Gabriel. And to be honest, the invisibility 
even on a very long distance, uh, people can still see you. So either the invisibility should be more invisible or the fuel should be higher so that you can just keep f floating, flying around like hot steel or pulsar for that matter. Or they should just bring back the, the damage splash, the AOE poten potential because Ah, it pains me to say, but I think Snow Mirage is in a very bad spot here. It feels a little bit like Northern Night, where they tried something new, made it too strong in the beginning, and then kind of abandoned it. It's, um, I'm sorry to see you here, Snow Mirage. I would love to see you receive a rehaul. Get like the second grenade back, or make those handguns uh, great again, or something. I don't know. Could be uh, in a better spot. And then moving on to Jojo, I think Jojo is just one of those sneaky mecha that almost nobody plays, but it's so strong. Also got a couple of nerfs, but to me Jojo plays quite similarly to Aurora. It feels like kind of if Aurora and Caramel had a love child and then Jojo would come out of it can fly in all directions, can hover, it can explode. It has this burst potential like crazy. It's, it's small, so it's a harder to hit target in that sense. Um, doesn't have a lot of durability, but it does have a very big shield. So if you manage to disengage um, well with this mecha, similar to Neutron Star, for example, or Hurricane, you can just hide on top of a building between those billboards and stuff and then when you recover, start nuking people again. I think Jojo is in a really good spot. And for some reason they have kept uh, buffing it also after release. Um, yeah, I think Jojo is in a really good, uh, good spot. Uh, moving on to Skyfall. Skyfall I have played a lot as well. And Skyfall has seen a couple of changes over time. Um, doesn't reload automatically anymore with bullets but it has like this heat thing going on that it starts shooting faster uh, the he uh, hotter it gets and I think that's really cool it still has the heat seeking missile similar to um, hurricane it's very slow similar to trio a tiny bit faster than uh, doomlight but it has like the a dash similar to Firefox. Uh, the rockets are superior to Trio's rockets, um, both in splash and just in uh, damage themselves. Uh, yeah, I think Skyfall is in a good spot. It's effective mostly at uh, mid to long range. It can be a surprisingly well sniper actually. The only downside is you don't, you can't really get in most positions. So it's very stuck to the ground, similar to uh, Firefox and Trio. But if you manage to play around with that, it's you will have a good time. Also, I noticed in Team Deathmatch, it's an absolute monster. I don't know why, maybe it's just that it fits my playstyle as a brawler, but it's just, I'm just destroying people when I play Team Deathmatch with, uh, with Skyfall. Uh, and Battle Royale is also very, very good, both in squad games as in solo games. Fun mecha, fun mecha. Then we're reaching the final three here. So we got Akashic here. And Akashic started out really weak uh, when it came out, but it climbed pretty fast actually. And uh, I'm really glad that I kept uh, trying that the designers are, they keep trying of making shield mecha work basically they keep trying to give them new, new chances like northern knight okay i think the shield is not really working doomlight the shield can work but yeah it's relatively easy uh, to abuse as an opponent but with akashi i think the shield is more effective because um You absorb damage, first of all. And second of all, you can retaliate that damage. And I think that's a really fun design choice. It's a bit harder to hit. They did change that over time. 
um, but it's not easy to hit it does i think it can still use a little bit more splash let me actually put it here i think the shield damage can use a little bit more splash uh, its mobility is fun it has i think the strongest biggest jump of all the mecha can jump basically in one leap anywhere and the nice thing about this jump is if you jump through someone you stun them uh, similar to what arthur has with the um, uh, status effect but you just have to dash through them you just have, have to hit them and then you have this follow-up nuke attack with the spear is really fun i think it's powerful but i do think so it's a difficult mecha to play um but once you did your dash you have to shield to mitigate some damage and blast it's i, I would say akashik is like the better more versatile form of northern knight where you have a bit more burst potential better for mobility a shield that is more widely applicable but at the same time i do feel like the shield is still a little bit too narrow too difficult maybe the shield is too small um so for that reason actually i think it might need a bit more work still because if I, if I compare it to hot steel gabriel and doom Knight, the only reason why i rank them at a and at higher is because their play style is a bit more narrow so i'm not saying that bad i'm just saying it's less versatile than what all of these other mecha can achieve but with Akashik, same like Bulbas actually, it's not necessarily the problem that their playstyle is narrow. I think they are just a little bit lacking compared to the other mecha. So for example, with Akashik, I, I think if the shield was bigger or maybe if the stun would have lasted longer as you do. I mean, it's, it's tricky. You don't also want to overdo it, but I think it, or like the, the the jump could maybe have um, a shorter cooldown or at least have a mod that allows you to have a shorter cooldown and not just the secondary pile of ability i think there's ways of still uh, improving akashik all right moving on to tempest i think tempest came out strong stayed strong and still is strong um it's very clear to me that they kept trying with the dashing to make like an assassin that um, that works and yeah the nukage i think it's also always a crit if you uh, a critical strike if you hit someone with your dash that's like a like 500 or 550 damage or something which is really strong and it jumps fast like a short cooldown uh its damage does fall off though so short and mid-range, I think Tempest is very powerful. Its damage does fall off pretty quickly after that. I like it that the secondary weapon, which I build it around mostly, does so much damage. Similar to uh, Flamenco, and it recharges pretty fast. But at the same time, I think the secondary, yeah could be a bit easier to hit maybe because the mecha is relying on it so much hmm. yeah, let's see if i compare it to the other mecha and a plus uh, i think actually tempest is pretty well rounded i did play it again like two days ago or something a couple of matches uh by the way in team deathmatch i think tempest is an absolute monster uh, because you can just keep jumping and dashing and the moment when you uh, take someone down with a dash it gets reset and i think that's oh, the same like akashik actually that's such a powerful mechanic and in team deathmatch or in iron arena i think both of them are super powerful but in battle royale you do want to be more versatile with your damage output on a longer range and I think Tempest actually, in that sense, hmm. Yeah, 
might have a more difficult time than maybe any of these above here. Could also be that I have more experience with the A plus here, but at the same time, I have a lot of hot steel experience, and I would say they kind of fall in the same category of powerful if the situations are right, but definitely not easy to maneuver. You have to really play around and approach the enemy. I do like that playstyle a lot. Um, Very fun mecha. I love Tempest. I I'm doubting though. It's either A or A plus. But just because its damage falls off so quickly, I think it, I will place it here. Same for Akashic. Its damage falls off so quickly the higher the distance is. And I'm already running mods where I'm increasing the accuracy of both of them and the reload rate of Tempest. Uh, but even then, uh, so for example with Flamenco I think they managed to strike a nice balance there that yeah Flamenco's damage also falls off the longer the distance is with the primary weapon but it doesn't feel as severe and punishing as Akashic and Tempest so yeah I think hmm. I'm not really sure yeah, I think Tempest is very solid mech because if I compare it with the latest edition Moon Rabbit super fun mecha I really love the design and this is also aesthetically if I compare it to Alborado for example sure you could say there's some gendered information in there in the design but it's way more subtle it's way more nuanced and I, it's not so sexualized in a way which I really applaud I think they struck a very nice design here that also fits how the mecha plays um, so that's purely aesthetic i think moon rabbit looks beautiful but at the same time i also think it plays very beautifully it has a lot of similarities actually to andromeda uh, in that how it flies how it hovers only di the big difference is though andromeda is strong across all ranges like can just shoot those spears and arrows or bolts or crossbow bolts in all ranges moon rabbit has some things going on that actually if you ask me might need a bit of work because yeah it bursts like crazy when it throws those uh, carrot grenades in this uh, with a secondary weapon can just annihilate a person be it a pilot or a mecha um but at the same time, it falls off really quickly, even more than Akashic or Tempest. Uh, you really, it feels like it's a mecha that's holding multiple grenade launchers, basically. And those uh, grenades are big. But you really have to play around with it. You have to figure out the angles, uh, the trajectory speeds uh, in relation to your own mobility, but also the mobility of the... Um, of the enemy and uh, yeah, I've, I've played some moon rabbits uh, when it came out the first week or so I reached the uh, top 100 on the server so I, I got some uh, moonlight uh, sorry uh, moon rabbit experience in there and I do really enjoy the mecha I do feel like there's something a little bit lacking also when you're flying so Andromeda just choose the same wherever it flies or stands or dashes moon rabbit changes its arsenal which is interesting i think so it shoots faster more precise but also less damaging when it's in the air uh, and it can charge the secondary to do like a burst of damage but that one's pretty hard to hit uh, because also that accuracy falls off pretty quickly uh, in the moon rabbit Form. so not the flight fly me to the moon form but the moon rabbit form while running um, it has a way shorter range but higher explosive radius and uh, lesser bullets also if I remember correctly but it can nuke nuke people better um, but the damage falls the damage radius effective damage radius falls off so quickly 
Uh, it is a small metal, so it's harder to hit, which is actually really nice, I think. Uh, I think it's currently the smallest mecha in the entire roster, which is fun. So that's definitely something it has in favor of it. But there's something I also noticed that when you throw your grenades into a building, is they don't really enter the building most of the times, which is weird because even those humongous uh, cannonballs from caramel and hot steel can just fly inside of buildings, but for some reason those little carrots almost can't. And I think that might be a bug or a mistake because I don't think it's a fair design choice. I think you should just, uh, because it's such an explosive uh, mecha, you should just, if you're chasing down pilots, you should just be able to annihilate them from outside, throwing carrot, exploding carrots inside. I think that would be amazing, um, but they didn't do that yet. So for that reason, I feel like it still needs a little bit of work, a little bit of rebalancing. To make it compete with the others all right so we're reaching the end here so i thank you for um staying here with me um listening to me ramble about my thoughts analyzing all of these uh, mecha the capabilities in relation to each other but also in relation to my preferences as i said before Feel free to disagree with me, feel free to engage in civil discussion in the comments below. Tell me how my um, uh, ranking list is great, tell me how it's wrong according to you. I don't care, just let me know what you think and uh, let's discuss with each other. I'm looking forward to welcoming more uh, Mecha into this roster. I think it's, a, it's still my favorite game, Super Mecha Champions. I um, wish you all a lot of fun with all of these mecha and uh, I will hope to see you next time in another video. Have a beautiful day and as always, peace.